Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, uh, I'm doing a review of Night of the Crabs by Guy N. Smith. So this is part of my ongoing series, uh, Carry On Screaming, where I'm reviewing British uh, horror novels from the kind of 70s onwards. Um, so if you've not seen them already, I started with 1973 uh, with the book The Irish Witch by Dennis Wheatley. Um, I then did from 1974 The Rats by James Herbert and then from 75 The Fog by James Herbert. Um, so we are up to 1976 now um, and the first entry, I think it will not be the last entry in the series actually, but the first entry from Guy and Smith, um, which is Night of the Crabs. So this is a book that was very much... Um, clearly inspired by Herbert's The Rats. Um, so I do not think this book would, would have existed without The Rat being such a huge success. It wasn't uh, Guy and Smith's first book, so he'd written a few things before this, um, in, including a book called The Sucking Pit, um, which proudly... Um, states on its cover or it has a blurb from Stephen King on its cover saying that it's it says it's something like the greatest horror title ever um and I think they they put that on the on the cover of the book hoping that people will think Stephen King meant that it was the greatest you know one of the greatest horror books ever I think he literally means it's one of the greatest titles ever um that title being The Sucking Pit. The book is, is pretty awful and, and most of Guy Smith's books to be fair are, are not great um so he is somebody who who churned out dozens and dozens of these kind of cheap, thin, um, pulpy horror novels, uh, particularly in the 70s and 80s. Um, he's most famous for these ones, the, the Crab series. So there were, a f I think, five or six books in the series. I've got a couple of other ones here. So I've also got Killer Crabs um, and Crab's Moon. Um, and they are, as you can probably imagine, they are about giant crabs. Um, so, whereas the rats by Herbert was around, was about a um, a, a kind of slightly convincing um, animal attack kind of setup. Um, in that, you know, everybody knows that you know London in the seventies, and indeed, you know, they say in any in any big city, you're never more than a couple of meters away from a rat, don't they? Um, so, you know, that the idea of swarms of rats attacking people um whilst it was perhaps a bit far-fetched wasn't hugely far-fetched um whereas the idea of giant intelligent crabs coming out of the sea and attacking people um is definitely a bit more far-fetched and this does really have a the, the kind of vibe of a 50s monster movie um it's very much got that sense in terms of the um you know kind of the scientists up against the crabs and the military getting involved and things like that it's really got that 50s vibe and feels much more like a throwback to that kind of thing rather than um rather than something like the rats which feels like quite a modern book um, or modern for the 70s anyway um so yes um it's an, it, but it, but this is a fun book, and the Crab series are are all fun, and they're definitely better than um, some of Guy and Smith's other books, um, or more entertaining anyway. And it can be hard, I think, to write books which are not great books but still manage to be entertaining. Um, you think about, you know, we often talk about movies that are so bad they're good, and I think in in film it's it's easier to do that somehow. It's it's you know I'm not saying it's easy to make a bad film that's still entertaining, but I think it's easier than it is to write a bad book that's still entertaining. And I think the reason for that is um, reading is more of an active experience, isn't it, than than watching a movie, and you're more likely to pause reading a book. And then think, oh, actually, do I really want to go back to that? Whereas with a movie, you tend to just watch it all the way through, um, even if it is bad. And, and also the the kind of shared experience of watching a bad film um, is really entertaining. So my son and I um, have you know, been watching bad movies together. We watched Plan 9 from Outer Space a little while ago. And, and watching a bad movie with somebody else is always a, a really fun experience. Whereas obviously reading a bad book is is more of a solitary experience. So Guy and Smith, you know, for all his failings, does manage to do a good job of making this book, whilst it is very silly and quite ridiculous, um, also manages to make it entertaining um, in a very cheesy, uh, not terribly uh, not terribly good way, but it is a fun, fun book. Um, so I better tell you what it's about, hadn't I? So it's set in Wales 
and basically these giant crabs come out the sea and start attacking people that's that's it really so the hero is a guy called clive davenport who's a botanist um and his nephew and his nephew's fiance um get attacked by the crabs near the start of the book and, and vanish um so it's about him that's how he kind of gets sucked into it um, and starts investigating what's going on. Um, there's a big military base involved as well. So there's a big military base in, in Wales near the near the sea where the crabs are. Um, so the military get involved too. And basically, it's about cra- it's about Clive against the crabs. There's also a bit of love interest. Uh, so Clive meets a a lady called Pat, um, and they have a fair bit of sex throughout the book so um it's you know this is very much a trashy book in terms of using sex and violence to to move the story along and and keep the reader interested um so there's there's quite a lot of sex in the book none of it massively graphic uh, and all of it very vanilla um but yeah there's there's definitely some sexy bits and there's lots of scenes of crabs um attacking people and, and dispatching them gorily um what I would say is, whereas with the rats, um, where Herbert does you know, a fantastic job of setting up these set pieces and being really inventive and, and creative with the way he uses the rats as, as a, a monster, um, the crabs basically is just, the crabs come out of the sea, they find someone, they pinch up, you know, they use their pincers to chop their heads off and their legs off and stuff like that. It's it's not terribly inventive. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of blood flowing, but it doesn't have the, the kind of macabre inventiveness that, that the rats has. In terms of the actual writing of it, so the the plot, like the plot of the rats, is, is a little bit ploddy and, and not desperately interesting and really it just serves to to carry you the reader from one scene of crabs attacking people to another scene of crabs attacking people but the the you know the 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 scenes of crabby violence are entertaining Um, and the sex scenes are also very entertaining although perhaps not deliberately smith is not the greatest of writers um, and he has this weird habit of using characters full names um, which particularly when it's in the sex scene does seem quite bizarre so i did want to read you um, a little bit of this. I, pr- I promise you, it won't get too. Uh, I promise you, it won't get too saucy. Her fingers were active, though. Cliff felt that thrilling sensation of his zip being pulled down. Her fingers groping inside the open vent, and then the coolness of the night air on his warm moistness. He gasped with pleasure. Pat Benson certainly knew what she was doing. <laughs> and then it continues. So, so it continues, and, and they have sex. Um, and then at the end he says, I'm more than glad I let you come with me tonight, he whispers as he zipped himself up again. I'm afraid, though, that we must still keep an eye open for those crabs, which is probably not what you're supposed to say at the end of sex. Um, so, yes, um, it, it's very silly, but it is it is entertaining. Um, and I think as a slice of kind of tr- very trashy British horror from the 70s, it's quite representative um, and definitely worth reading. And if you want to try Guy and Smith, I would say this is one of his one of his better books. Now, sadly, a lot of Guy and Smith books seem to be out of print at the moment. Um, he sadly passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and around that time, a lot of his books, which had been available on Kindle, went out of print. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if there's some rights uh, kind of issue at the moment that's stopping them from being published. There are some that you can get, but a lot of them, and I think the Crab series are among those, you can't get at the moment, um, which means that um, kind of vintage paperback copies like this one are, are going for inflated amounts on, on eBay. Um, but yeah, if you find it, if you find a copy of it cheap, it's definitely a laugh and definitely worth reading. The other thing I would say about this book um, is that it's it's even shorter than it looks. So it looks pretty short. I mean, it's 144 pages, um, but it's also got um, it's got lots of chapters, um, and every chapter has a little cute little crab picture. Um, can you see that? A cute little crab picture at the start of it, with like a blank page before it and a blank page after it as well. So it's actually probably only about 120 pages long. Um, the other thing that's notable about this is that Sean Hudson, the British horror author, who I really like and who's, some of whose books I will be talking about um, on the channel fairly soon in, in this series, um, 
he quoted Night the Crabs as the reason he started writing. Um, so he said he read he read Night of the Crabs and he figured that if this book could get published, he could definitely write one that would get published. Um, and indeed he did, and you know, and had a very successful career off it. So so we owe Sean Hudson's career to uh, to Guy and Smith and Night of the Crabs. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. Um, so this is um, one that will be familiar to viewers uh, because it features in the intro video for the channel. Uh, so this is The Master, also by Guy Smith, which is not nearly as good um, as The Crabs, I have to say. Although it does um, it does include a scene where um, some of the characters find like a box full of um, pickled foreskins, <laughs> which is very bizarre. Uh, but yeah, it's not nearly as good as The Crabs. So yeah, I, I would pass on this one and go for The Crabs instead if you want a taste of Guy and Smith. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you've read any Guy and Smith um, and what you think of him. As I say, I don't think he's the greatest horror writer out there, um, but he is um, he is interesting and quite fun at times. Um, anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.